Right. Here we are again. Hi, Medford Poetry Gathering friends. This is Vince. And this is Naomi. Welcome once again to our home for another video in the July 2020 series of Poetry Gathering videos for the Medford Art Center. These videos will be posted each Friday in July on the Medford Art Center webpage or on our YouTube channel. Simply search for Medford Arts Poetry. Tonight we'll be sharing three submissions to our 2019 Adult Poetry Contest, as well as celebrating words from artists born in July and words of impact. Let's begin with words provided by John Dennison. This is Once Upon a Fence. Once upon a fence, I sat its wooden posts and iron rails. A unique type in that small town. I'm sure today some could still be found. Things were different way back then. I think I was nine or maybe ten. A summer day and very nice. I often sat there once or twice just to think and look at things and wonder what times would bring. Just a kid with thoughts and dreams of what my feelings really mean. I often wondered why I was here and then there came a tender tear. Who would I marry? What kids would there be? One or two, or maybe three. Their names I say in my mind, but yet I know there's plenty of time. These are things that I thought then, when I was nine or maybe ten. Well, now again, on a nice summer day, I write this poem, and I can say that all the things I thought back then, when I was nine or maybe ten, all came true. A wife and kids, yes, all three, and six or more of grand ones be, that we can love and hold forevermore. Yes, time is a precious thing for all. Thank you, John. We hope you're well. Thank you, John. Next, from Louise Sprouse. This is Daughters. When time reclaims the wisdom of a lifetime and I become your child, will you remember the mother who taught you the lessons of life? Should my resolve dissipate into confusion, can you excuse my frailties? Each time anxiety paralyzes my senses, will you be reminded of the many times I calmed your childhood fears? Although my body becomes an empty shell, will you recall the comfort of my embrace? If my bed becomes the nucleus of my world, will you envision the mother who moves strong and confidently through the pathways of her life? When only memory remains, know my love for you will be forever embedded in my soul. Thank you, Louise. We hope you're well. Thank you, Louise. And finally, from Lynette Esposito. This is look at the pictures that hold love. I sprung from my mother early, a Christmas baby who took her first breath just after Thanksgiving. Quickened soul intact, a laughing twig who sprouted like a cornucopia full of joy. Look at the baby picture. Not the later ones, where life doused the fire and burned the tree. Not the schooled ones, where loneliness met its match. Not the work ones taken for identification, and not even the driver's licensed ones, where I was not allowed to tilt my head. Look at the ones where my hand is on your shoulder, or the ones when we are dancing or watching our children or the ones beneath the canopy of sky, when our fingers are intertwined like young lovers. Look at the ones with oceans in our eyes, the ones where dolphins consort and water glistens in sunlight. Thank you, Lynn, we miss you. Thanks, Lynn. Next, artists born in July. This first artist was born July 2nd, 1923 in Poland. She's an essayist, a translator, an illustrator, and a poet. She first published her poems in 1945 and won the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1996. 
but she published fewer than 350 poems. And when she was asked why she's published so few poems, she simply replied, I have a trash can in my home. <laughs> when researching this artist, I was so excited because I, by vocation, work with numbers all day. And here an artist, Wisława Szymborska, has written a poem called A Word on Statistics. Out of every hundred people, those who always know better, 52. Unsure of every step, almost all the rest. Ready to help if it doesn't take long, 49. Always good, because they cannot be otherwise, four, well, maybe five. Able to admire without envy, 18. Led to error by youth, which passes, 60, plus or minus. Those not to be messed with, 40 and four. Living in constant fear of someone or something, 77. Capable of happiness, 20 some odd at most. Harmless alone, turning savage in crowds, more than half for sure. Cruel, when forced by circumstances, it's better not to know, not even approximately. Wise in hindsight, not many more than wise in foresight. Getting nothing out of life except things, 30, though I would like to be wrong. Doubled over in pain and without a flashlight in the dark. 83, sooner or later. Those who are just. Quite a few at 35. But if it takes effort to understand, three. Worthy of empathy, 99. Mortal, 100 out of 100. A figure that has never varied yet. Hmm. Next, an artist born July 12th, 1904, in Chile. The artist Ricardo Basualto was a diplomat and a senator. But first, at the age of 13, he was a poet. But his father didn't approve. So he used the pen name Pablo Neruda. He spoke Spanish, French, and English. And in this poem, he shares words about something we've all done before, something so simple as walking by the seafood section of a supermarket. We've all seen it, that vast expanse of ice with all these different fish. And Pablo Neruda wrote an ode to a large tuna in the market. Here among the market's vegetables, this torpedo from the ocean depths, a missile that swam, now lying in front of me dead. Surrounded by the earth's green froth, these lettuces, bunches of carrots, only you live through the sea's truth, survive the unknown, the unfathomable darkness, the depths of the sea, the great abyss, le grand abîme, only you, varnished, black-pitched witness to that deepest night, only you, dark bullet barreled from the depths, carrying only your one wound, but resurgent, always renewed, locked into the current, fins fletched like wings in the torrent, in the coursing of the underwater dark, like a grieving arrow, sea javelin, a nerveless oiled harpoon, dead in front of me, catafalque king of my own ocean, once sappy as a sprung fir in the green turmoil, once seed to sea quake, tidal wave, now simply dead remains. In the whole market, yours was the only shape left with purpose or direction in this jumbled ruin of nature. You are a solitary man of war among the frail vegetables, your flanks and prow black and slippery as if you were still a well-oiled ship of the wind the only true machine of the sea, unflawed, undefiled, navigating now the waters of death. What a wonderful piece of poetry. We'll close tonight with words of impact. First, 
from an artist born July 28, 1866 in London, England. Illustrator, natural scientist, conservationist, accomplished sheep farmer. This artist's interests expanded through all of nature's sciences. She was a botanist, an archeologist, a mycologist. She studied taxonomy and entomology. And at 14, she started writing a diary in code so no one else could read it. And she loved to read fairy tales. Thankfully, amongst all those interests, Helen Beatrix Potter also loved to write children's stories. And in 1902, she published the tale of Peter Rabbit. And tonight, we'd like to share with you some of her words, her simple, simple words that have such great impact. First, the place has changed now, and many familiar faces are gone. But the greatest change is myself. I was a child then. I had no idea what the world would be like. I wished to trust myself on the waters and the sea. Everything was romantic in my imagination. The woods were peopled by the mysterious good folk. The lords and ladies of the last century walked with me along the overgrown paths and picked the old-fashioned flowers among the box and rose hedges of the garden. Next, some quotes from Peter Rabbit. First, I can't think of one thing that could possibly stop our fun. Next, what heaven can be more real than to retain the spirit world of childhood. And finally, believe there is a great power silently working all things for good. Behave yourself and never mind the rest. The words of Beatrix Potter. And tonight we'll close with words from an artist born January 1956 in West Ireland. Author, priest, and poet best known for popularizing Celtic spirituality. This is a blessing from John O'Donohue. May you awaken to the mystery of being here and enter the quiet immensity of your own presence. May you have joy and peace in the temple of your senses. May you receive great encouragement when new frontiers beckon. May you respond to the call of your gift and find the courage to follow its path. May the flame of anger free you from falsity. May warmth of heart keep your presence aflame and may anxiety never linger about you. May your outer dignity mirror an inner dignity of soul. May you take time to celebrate the quiet miracles that seek no attention. May you be consoled in the secret symmetry of your soul. May you experience each day as a sacred gift woven around the heart of wonder. We wish you all well. We miss you so until we see you again. Good night. Good night. Stay safe.